Recording in progress. Mr. Mayor, we live. Great, thank you for that. So today is November 16th, 2022. The time is 7, 10 p.m. And I'm going to order the Bond Park City Council regular meeting. Do we have anybody for an invocation? Would our housing commissioner mind leading us in an invocation? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much just for this opportunity to come together as a community to discuss all the planning, the different things that are going on. We also thank you for this, this season that we're in with thankfulness. I pray for each family that is represented in this room, those that are watching online at home, and the other council members who are also at home. I pray that you be a part of this meeting, continue to just bless us and be a, a community that comes together. And we thank you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. The United States of America. And which is stands under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, would you mind doing a roll call, please? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member Alejandra Avila? Here. Council Member Monica Garcia? Here. Council Member Paul Hernandez? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damien? Here. Mayor Manuel Estrada? Here. And City Treasurer Marie Contreras? Here. Hi, Marie. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing. Good, Thank good. you. Glad to Congratulations you. to all. Thank you. And so at this moment, uh, city attorney, can you please report out from closed session? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, earlier today, the city council um, held a uh, amended special meeting to discuss the closed session items. Uh, the items are listed on the amended special meeting agenda. The first was a conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation regarding the claims that were listed on the agenda. City council did not discuss that item uh, and will be continued to a later date. Item number two was conference with legal counsel, existing litigation in the matters uh, described on the agenda. With respect to that item, all council members were present except that uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Demian uh, did not participate in the Kuberry hemingway finley uh, matter. Uh, but with respect to all the other matters, the city council heard a presentation and an update on those cases from uh, special counsel and legal counsel. There was also discussion of public employment uh, regarding uh, human resources manager. City Council heard a presentation from staff regarding uh, the status of the selection of a candidate. And then finally, there was also a conference with real property negotiators concerning the property located at 4161 Baldwin Park Avenue under negotiation or under discussion were priced in terms for possible purchase of property. City Council heard a presentation regarding uh, that matter and provided direction, and we have no reportable action. That concludes the report. Great. Thank you for that, City Attorney. So at this moment, I will move to adjourn the closed session, I mean the special meeting, can I get a second? Second. Any objections? If not, uh, special meeting is adjourned and we continue with our regular meeting. So announcements, the city council are also members of the board of directors of the housing authority and finance authority, which are concurrently convening with the city council this evening and each council member is paid an additional stipend of $30 for attending the housing authority meeting and $50 for attending the finance authority meeting. Now we move on to our proclamations, commendations and presentations. Um, all right, so we will go ahead and do our presentations. All right, so at this moment, we will do a proclamation for Family Court Awareness Month. And I believe we have Donna Estevez with us and Sandy Ross. Sandy Ross here. If not, Donna Estevez, you can join us up here at the dais.
So for anybody who's not aware, uh, Peaky's Law is a bill that was uh, authored by our very own Senator Susan Rubio, which mandates judges to take training on domestic violence and child abuse uh, to prioritize child safety and custody proceedings and clarifies California's ban. And I have a proclamation for you, which I will read. So, in 2017, Peaky, a five-year-old, was suffocated by his biological father during an approved court visit despite his father's history of abusive behavior and his mother, Ana Estevez, plead to the court to protect him. And whereas to honor Peaky and all the California children who have been murdered by a divorcing or separating parent and the conser conservatively estimated 58,000 U.S. children annually are being court ordered into unsupervised visitation with an abusive parent, and whereas the mission of the CA FCAMC is to increase awareness on the importance of empirically based education and training on domestic violence and child abuse, including emotional, psychological, physical, and sexual abuse, as well as childhood trauma and post-separation abuse for judges and all professionals working on cases within the family court system. And whereas the mission of FCAMC is to emphasize the importance of using scientifically valid evidence-based treatment programs and services that are proven in terms of safety, <coughs> effectiveness, and the therapeutic value. And whereas together we work together to educate judges and other family court professionals on evidence-based peer-reviewed research, such research is a critical component to making decisions that are truly in the best interest of children. Now, therefore, I, Emmanuel J. Estrada, Mayor of the City of Baldwin Park, along with Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damian, Council Members Alejandra Avila, Monica Garcia, Paul C. Hernandez, City Treasurer Maria E. Contreras, and City Clerk Marlene Garcia, do hereby proclaim the November, to November 2022 as Family Court Awareness Month in the City of Baldwin Park and proclaim and encourage all residents and community members to support local group events to educate ourselves and prevent the harm of children in the hands of family members and to honor and value the lives of children. Good evening, Mayor Estrada, City Council. And I want to thank you for proclaiming the November is Family uh, Court Awareness Month. My name is Donna Estevez. I'm a grandmother of a murdered child and child safety advocate, bringing awareness on serious child safety issues that are happening in the family court system. Five years ago, I ended up in family court system dealing with issues related to child safety and had no idea how hard it would be to protect my grandchild. Family court rulings are widely based on parents getting a fair share of parenting time with the child, even more than the safety of the child or the parents. Child proclamation, prote I'm sorry, child protection is viewed as the job of social services. The family courts are ruling on cases with child abuse concerns every day. Most would be shocked to know that in many states, family court judges on the bench making rulings that impact children's lives have zero mandated training hours in childhood trauma, child emotional, physical, and sexual abuse, coercive control, and domestic violence. In many states, barbers and beauticians are mandated to have more domestic violence training than any judges. Here are some of the related statistics. One in 15 children are victims of child abuse, usually by a family or parent. 75% of DSA is per perpetrated by family members or a, a person known to the child. That's child uh, sexual abuse. Members are almost half, 49% of the per perpetrators of crimes against child sexual assault victims younger than six years of age. That's a uh, statistic from the uh, Department of Justice. More than 50% of the time when an allegation of child sexual abuse is raised, the courts are switching physical custody to the alleged abuser, which happened in our case. A child a child's exposure to an abuser is among the strongest indicators of risk of incest victimization. Abusive parents are more likely to seek sole custody than more than non-violent ones, and they are successful about 70% of the time. 
Domestic violence often worsens after separation or divorce, but the focus turns to the children. With up to 60% of the perpetrators who abuse their spouse will abuse a child. Domestic violence is about power and control. The desire to maintain power and control doesn't mysteriously vanish when the relationship ends. The family court system becomes a new and highly effective platform for abusers. And those abusers know how to manipulate the courts. Our primary goal this year is also to shine a spotlight on the need for mandated training for judges and family court professionals who are ruling on cases with child safety and domestic violence concerns every day. Our children's lives are literally dependent on the courts as educated, becoming educated on these issues. It means the world, not only to me, but to all the other parents in the state of California, actually the United States. We have family court cases. So at this moment, we will welcome our Housing Commissioner, Laura Franklin, to give us a presentation on the celebration of Black History Month for February 2023. Good evening, Mayor Estrada, Mayor Pro Tem Damien, City Council members, and esteemed guests, as well as the Baldwin Park community. As Mayor has said, my name is Laura Franklin. I'm one of the Housing Commissioners but I'm here to present on um, celebrating Black History Month for February 2023. Next slide, please. So I do not have my glasses on, so I'm going to attempt, because I'm nearsighted, so I'm going to attempt. <laughs> so the significance is recently in February 2022, I was, well, I was sworn in as housing commissioner by Mayor Estrada so with this proclamation and declaration, it warrants a celebration. So why celebrate Black History Month? It's because it's part of the fabric that makes Baldwin Park the community that it is. African Americans make up 1.41% of Baldwin Park. Now, this celebration allows us to tell our history. So what does Black History Month mean to me? It just means that I know that this city is bigger than what it what it portrays to be that we, again, we're part of the fabric of this community and there are more of us here who want to get involved but just don't know how to and that's why it's important. Next slide, please. So as you see, <laughs> my picture with Mayor Estrada in February 2022, as well as that delicious box of Cheetos behind him. But um, I just wanted, I just wanted to show the community uh, <laughs> the picture of us. Next slide, please. So just a quick overview, who? This invitation is extended to all profit and nonprofit organizations, African-American, Hispanic, Asian, and Caucasian. 
wishing to participate by selling food products and or their services because we want to celebrate all of the the hues that make up the city of Baldwin Park but the focus will be to celebrate Black History Month but it is fully inclusive when possibly February 18th or 20 or the 25th 2023 11 30 to 2 um, February 11th is Super Bowl weekend, so I dare not try to compete with that weekend. And the first weekend of February tends to be, uh, you kind of lose some time with that as far as advertising. Um, and then what? Just to give, to give recognition, invoke celebration, provide education, and share our faith through history. And why? Because all cultures of Baldwin Park should be celebrated. Next slide, please. So what this looks like, as you can, as you see in both slides, that's me. I'm at a Juneteenth celebration. I was a vendor there. And um, what this will look like is we invite, again, all vendors of all hues of whatever product that they make or sell um, throughout either the ARC, our foyer here outside the Baldwin Park uh, City Hall, as well as outside in the front, where each vendor will set up their own table excuse me, set up their tables to sell their products, of course, at whatever cost that they have. But again, this also includes all hues of Baldwin Park. Next slide, please. So it may be kind of small to see, but it's just a projected Black History celebration. Of course, the first event being February 2023 to include vendors, dancers, orators, authors, Black art, displays and music and then should this continue to be an annual celebration uh eventually we'd like to also celebrate juneteenth but that's further down the line but i just wanted uh the community to see that timeline next slide please so just some interesting facts that uh our community may not know in 1926 carter g woodson launched a weekend a week-long excuse me celebration of black history in the united states in 1976, President Gerald Ford officially recognizes Black History Month. And Black History Month is also celebrated by Canada, Ireland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. And African Americans, again, make up 1.41% of Baldwin Park residents. Next slide, please. So uh, here again, presenting arts, education, literature, and science, just a few examples of what African Americans bring not only to this community, but of course, uh, nationally. We have the music of Miles Davis, the artwork of Valdez Parti, which is a dear friend of mine, the writing of myself, Laura Franklin, and then we have, the last one is an educator, Miss Ellie Ty. She's been a resident of Baldwin Park since 1974. Next slide, please. So ways we can celebrate as a community, provide full support from our city leaders, discover African-American artists through displays of artwork in the courtyard of City Hall, Baldwin Park Library, and the ARC, paint the crosswalk in African-American colors through Main Street, raise the African-American flag in downtown Baldwin Park, read about African-American authors, listen to African-American musicians, Learn and teach important moments of African-American history. Next slide, please. And then the key people that will uh, assist in making this happen, of course, our first responders, our law enforcement, the city of Baldwin Park city leaders, as well as the community at large. Next slide, please. And in conclusion, this, pro this project cannot be successful, successful without the full backing and support of our city council, city hall, city employees, first responders, local businesses, and the residents of this community collectively. Next slide, please. Again, I would like to say thank you, and we hope that you will consider supporting the 2023 Black History event as a celebration for Baldwin Park and show that this city is a community which embraces cultural diversity. This project, again, cannot be successful without the full backing and support of our city council, city hall, city employees, first responders, local businesses, and the residents of this great community. This event will be a great opportunity to expose the community and local businesses to a culture it may not have known before. If you have any questions or concerns, my contact information is there, my email. Next slide, please. 
And last but not least, any questions? No questions, but it sounds like a great event. I'm looking forward to it. Let me know what you need help with. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, making sure that everybody thank you. in the city of... Yeah, okay, thank you. Next, we have a presentation by our very own city staff regarding the uh, property at is it Olive and Main Avenue. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'm going to ask Melissa to also come up to the uh, podium, if you may, please. Melissa, I'll, you and I will tag team on this one. So this is a... Uh, presentation that came about as a result of a direction that that uh, Councilmember Garcia had asked the staff to keep the this particular location as a um, uh, as an item of follow-up in all of the council meetings and so this is the first in a series but you know depending on what um, what after today's presentation, we will either have it in every meeting or certainly frequently enough, but we, our intent is to stay with the, the spirit of the instruction or the letter of the instruction from uh, Council Member Garcia. Uh, and, and the direction came as a result of what has become at times a blighted location with um, either dumping of bulky items accumulation of debris and uh, temporarily and sometimes briefly, but certainly very um, uh, uh, concerning sometimes the, the building of, um, of homeless encampments. And as all of you know, since uh, of course you know the city well inside out, Olive Street is a passageway or a pathway for school children. Uh, going to and from school. So, um, you, you know, I uh, I visited the site along with uh, um, Ron Garcia and the chief of police, and it just happened to be during the, the school hours. And, and so, yes, uh, got to talk with some of the students about what they encountered. And, and so, yeah, we, we definitely want to keep an eye on this property. But what we wanted to do today, give you a refresher or a presentation of the lay of the land, literally, with regards to what makes up the corner. Because we refer to it as the corner of Olive Street in Maine or the Olive Street Market, uh, when in fact it's a, an, a, a conglomerate of multiple parcels with multiple owners. But we will continue to refer to it as the Olive Street and Main Avenue corner. So um, uh, next slide, please. Here you could see how many parcels make up the corner. Uh, what stands out here uh, very obviously is the largest property, which is over one acre, uh, uh, which is where a current shopping center exists. Uh, at the very corner, uh, where the building in question sits is, is a parcel that is under uh, a half an acre, 0.34 acres. And there's a an adjacent building that at times would appear to be part of the same parcel, but it's not. It's a separate, distinct parcel owned by a different owner. Uh, in total, this corner um, ends up being seven different parcels with I believe six or five owners. So on the southern ver uh, portion of it would be the American Legion, which you know is probably better known for to most of us. But we're, we have included the property because we believe it needs to be looked at in the context of the larger uh, property. Next slide, please. So this is the zoning of the area and the and the parcels in question in particular. And since it deals with zoning, Mel, do you mind explaining the zoning of the parcels? 
Uh, okay, so the, the whole corner of Olive and Main Avenue is zoned mixed use too. Um, right now, some of the the current, um, well, most of the current businesses there are, are um, legal non-conforming because of the time that they um, started conducting their business, the code allowed for it. But now our current code, um, a mixed use too, um, the city aims to have um, a mixture of commercial on the first floor and some sort of residential um, aspect um, on the second floor or above. Um, so that's what in the future we as a city hope to go towards. Thank you, Melissa. Next slide, please. Okay, here we number the parcels just for ease of, of being able to track it and, and we show the existing use or um, you know, state of, of condition, if you will. The largest parcel is a shopping center, uh, also a legal non-conforming use since it's now has been rezoned for mixed use. Number two is the building that general, that sits vacant. And by the way, I want to report that um, uh, there's, there's a small portion that's attached to the building which had been used as a, a place where uh, – Unhoused individuals, unhoused uh, persons would essentially uh, habitate. They, they would go inside of this this small area that looks more like a um, a container compartment and 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 live there. Uh, so, in working with the owner, we they have now secured the area by putting more heavy duty locks, ensuring that it's always um, kept away from being accessed. So th we've done that. I wanted to report that because I know that's something that uh, uh, Council Member Garcia wanted us to address immediately, and, and we did. So, so that building has sat vacant, um, it, and it's still vacant. It, the, we didn't get a chance to go inside, but I know our code enforcement folks and our building official may have gone inside at some point, but uh, we didn't that time. And... Um, there is a uh, parcel number three is currently being used. And again, this is a bit deceiving because most of us would think of it as being part of the corner building, but it's not. And it's good to see that it's being utilized. It's actually a fitness studio, which, you know, on my way home later in the evening, uh, I see folks going in there for fitness. I'm, I, I'm always tempted to make a stop and <laughs> do my, my workouts there. So uh, there's our liquor store on parcel number four. And in between all of this, there's a single-family residence. As you can see, number, number five, owner-occupied. Uh, six and seven are actually both owned by uh, the American Legion. So number six is it, their parking lot. Number seven is their building, but two distinct parcels, two different parcels. Next slide will show the ownership. There you have who owns each of the parcels. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, we've reached out to some of the owners already, certainly for parcel, uh, parcel number two. We have made contact with the owner who happens to run the liquor store that's in parcel number four. So the, um, the liquor store uh, operator owns the corner building. And uh, so here we list, this is public information, so it's not a problem showing who the owners are. Next slide. These are some of the pictures of the current uh, buildings and their current use. Um, you, you could see that uh, the, the, the market, olive market from the outside doesn't necessarily seem uh, as a very uh, neglected building but we know that inside we we, we have to do uh, more diligence to see what the state of the inside of the building is so that there isn't any sort of cause for a public health risk such as you know these buildings if they go neglected for a long time can be a harborage for for vermin and other such you know, potential health hazards. So we will continue to work with the owner on that. N next uh, next slide. 
these are more pictures. I, again, you know, the single family dwelling uh, nestled in between all the commercial buildings, uh, also a non conforming legal use, right, Melissa? Um, and, and so um, the American Legion building, which thanks to the city's grant, have been able to really um, it, bring some much needed renovations to the building for sure on the outside, but also on the inside. Next slide. Maybe this is the end. Yeah, I think that was. So so for today, we simply wanted to do a baseline presentation, no recommendations, no actions whatsoever. Just wanted uh, to begin the bringing this to the fore as Council Member Garcia had requested that we do. That's that's the end of the presentation. If there are any any questions from the council, then Mayor, I do have some comments and possibly okay. questions. But first of all, I want to say thank you to our staff for um, responding to the site and securing it and ensuring that there were no, I guess trespassers onto the site. Um, this was an issue that was brought to my attention from the neighborhood. And it's been an ongoing concern in the neighborhood. Um, this property has been vacant for at least eight years, if not more. And there was a fire inside this property. And I don't know if, I mean, it, it appears as though improvements were not made. Um, I could be wrong, but the picture that we didn't capture was the entrance with broken windows. And, um, you know, this is probably a good example of the broken window theory. So um, I'm just glad to see that staff responded and secured the site because my concern is we do have children passing through there. Um, it's becoming part of their everyday environment. And they look at this site, I'm sure, and they think this is just my community. And neither, neither of us, none of us, you know, should, should tolerate the eyesore um, or the nuisance that, that this property has become. And thank you for getting into detail, Enrique, about the exact property of concern, which is what you've labeled as number two. And um, I would like the chief at the next briefing to let us know um, the incidents that have occurred here at this site in the last two years, um, because I do recall that there was a stabbing involving a homeless person. Um, but there have been other issues um, because I've called personally on behalf of residents that have called me. And so, um, you know, if we can look at the public safety aspect of having this property sit vacant for as long as it has, um, I think that's another element that we should consider. So I do appreciate, again, staff's responsiveness, um, looking at the aerial and some of the pictures is a start, you know, securing the site is a start. Um, looking at the land use and what's allowed and what is being um, proposed. And, you know, that would be one angle. The public safety piece is another. Um, and then the multi-property owners, you know, and the challenges that that presents could be another angle. But I, I have been bringing this property to the attention of staff for years now um, because residents have brought it to my attention and um, I feel like now we you know we really have to see some movement so thank you for that information and I would ask that at the next briefing that um, the chief if you could um, present any statistics that you may have um, I know specifically of one that was troublesome and pretty bad but um, I do know that the police cars will often, you know, sit in that parking lot, perhaps because it's, it's a property to keep an eye out on. 
but um, I see them there pretty often. And um, that's a good thing. So I look forward to the next briefing on this property. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Garcia. Thanks. So I know that the property owners of that property labeled number two have tried to bring people in. And I think one of them was Victory Outreach and they might've had at least one or two other businesses that wanted to come in there. So, you know, I do think that we have to work with them because it seems like the only other way that that space is gonna get used is if it's demolished and multi-use is brought in, which I mean is a long shot. It's very expensive. And with the current times, it's just not gonna happen anytime soon. Um, you know, I do think that, you know, the city does bear a responsibility here based on the zoning that we've input on them and trying to kind of bend their arm here to do what we want them to do so you know i think there's a lot of things going on here so we should be working with the um we should be working with the property owner to figure out how we can help them uh fill that property if that's uh, the most beneficial way to get that property used we'll do thanks so now that we are done with our proclamations, commendations, and presentations. I will move to open up public communication. Uh, City Clerk, is there anybody looking to speak? Thank you, Mayor. We did not receive any requests uh, for telephone calls, but we do have a written request, uh, Catherine Lozier, uh, our library updates. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and members of the council and community. As we move towards the holiday season, I just wanted to remind the, the council and community that the library offers free COVID test kits. Families can, uh, family members can come in and pick up two kits for each member of their household. Not all members need to be in the library. They can pick them up each day as needed. Uh, you do not need to have a library card. You can just come in, or for those who are weary about coming into buildings still, you can give us a call from the parking lot, and we can bring them out to you curbside service style. And these COVID test tests are provided to the LA County Library from the Los Angeles County of Public Health. Uh, switching gears, we have two programs in person coming up in the next, or coming up this week, actually. We have our MAKEMO, which is a uh, STEM programming for children. It's going to take place on Friday the 18th from 3.30 to 4.30. We are gonna have our Ozobots, cute little robots, and it's gonna be teaching kids five through 12 basic coding skills. It, it is recommended to make your reservation in advance and you can do that now by going to the library's website or giving us a call. And then for teens, this Saturday we have a um, DIY tote bag program at three o'clock. Teens will learn the history of the tote bag, which I'm sure they've all been dying to know. And then they'll also get to make their own tote bag while, while um, in the program. And for those who have teens who need community service, they can get community service by joining our library programs. Thank you so much for all that you do. And we hope to see you at the library. That is that the only written one? At this moment, if anybody would like to speak that didn't fill out a uh, speaker card, now is your time. Sure. I've been dying to get up here. Just keep an eye on the on the on the timer. You have three How minutes. How y'all doing? Good. All right. Excellent. Uh, I'll introduce myself. Some of y'all probably you might know me uh, around the city. Uh, my name is Brandon Logan Bender. And I'm very excited about February. And celebrating with you. Uh, my grandmother was also, uh, she fled the war in Sicily and she was born in Tunisia, Africa, and I have a lot of family in South Africa. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited and I'm part of that 1% of Baldwin Park. Um, I would like to speak about, and I was, I was a master at arms in the Navy. I was the global director of UFC gym uh, for the MMA program, our mixed martial arts. And I helped develop our youth program. I was the first, first youth director. Um, I created my own position in the company. With that being said, um, I was arrested. Not even arre not arrested. Okay, someone was running after my mother with a sharp object. Okay, and I threw him to the ground. Okay, and now I let him attack my mother. Okay, then Baldwin Park, PD, 
decides to get on top of me, and I'm not being I'm not being uh, resistant at all. And being a master at arms in the Navy for six years as a reserve officer, I know the procedures. I was treated very inhumane, okay, not like a human being. Arrested against my will, saying I'm not arrested. Then I get in the back of the cop car, and, I'm, and I might need another three minutes, but I'll summarize it, okay? I'm left in the back seat of the cop car with the engine turned on. Does anybody know about that? I could not breathe. I am screaming. I cannot breathe in the back of the cop car because the engine is turned on. And I'm being told I'm not arrested. They handcuffed me incorrectly. I am begging them because it is breaking my hands the way they cuffed me. Inhumane. Then I'm told I'm not being arrested. I said, I need to speak to a lawyer. I feel like I'm getting drugged in there. They're bringing in different people. I'm not being held against my will. Then all of a sudden, I have 10 people. Or more, force me against my, well, actually I stick my nose out of, uh, uh, there was a little hole. I stick my nose in my mouth out, the only way to breathe. Okay? Then I get dragged on a, on a gurney against my will. But 10 people holding me down. Drag me through the hospital with a bunch of people trying to put needles in my arm. And I have a missing daughter that Baldwin Park does not seem to care about. Your time is up, sir. Thank you for your time. I hope to make the city of Baldwin Park a better place. Shed light on the situation. Thank you. Your time is up, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no one's clapped for me, huh? Anybody else looking to speak? <clears throat> uh, good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I uh, just want to give uh, the council a thank you on behalf of the seniors and myself for the new TVs that are being installed at the uh, Julia McNeil Senior Center. It's been 12 long years since I've been asking for one TV, and you made it happen for four TVs. So they should be installed uh, and be ready for the Mundial. So it's been 12 <laughs> long years. Every four years, I would ask for one TV, and then nothing happened. Second Mundial comes over, ask and ask, and finally, it's going to happen. So thank you on behalf of the seniors and myself. Thank you. Great. Anybody else? If not, at this moment, I will close public communication, and we will go to our consent calendar. Mr. Mayor, items. if I may? Uh, yes, go ahead. Well, thank you. Uh, before we end the meeting, I want to make sure that we close this uh, meeting on behalf of my aunt, uh, Rebecca Delgado de, uh, Gonzalez. She passed on uh, November the 2nd um, as a result of a high-speed a uh, car accident by, by a young individual who was uh, unaware of their speed. Um, as a result, uh, she is uh, leaving behind a family of uh, grieving uh, members, not only myself, but also uh, her beloved uh, sons and daughters and grandchildren. Uh, she, will, she passes away at the young age of 73 years old uh, with also... Um, you know, this is a very much preventable uh, accident. Uh, if someone was being respectful of at least the uh, the speeds within her neighborhoods uh, that she passed. So thank you, Ms. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for sharing with us, Council Member Hernandez. And we do uh, share our condolences with you during this hard time. Very sorry for your loss, Mr. Hernandez. So we will be moving to our consent calendar. If there's any items council is looking to pull, now is your time. I believe uh, we will be pulling item number seven. 
Mary, I'd like to pull item number four. Okay. Any other items? So, um, I guess I'll just pull item number five real fast. So I will make a motion to pass items number one through eight, excluding four and five, and having set uh, item seven completely removed from today's city council meeting for a future date. Uh, can I get a second? Uh, city clerk, roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Manuel Estrada. Yes. Council member Alejandra Avila. Yes. Council member Paul Hernandez. Yes. Council member Monica Garcia. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damien. Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you for that. So, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you have the floor with item number seven. I mean, sorry, item number four. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So, item number four is the um, Shop Local Digital Gift Card Program. Uh, Enrique, I don't know if uh, Victor's with you. Would do you guys have a presentation on this? Yes, Victor is here, Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, we okay. also have uh, uh, Barry Foster. He's with uh, uh, HDL. Uh, he's, uh, he's available by Zoom for the presentation. Uh, I'll give a quick overview of the program. What's the name? Uh, Barry Foster. He was on earlier. Uh, I'm on. Do you want me to do it now? Yeah, go ahead, Barry. Okay, thank you. Again, my name is Barry Foster. I'm a principal and managing director with the HDL companies. I manage our um, economic development division of our company. So I'm gonna go through um, just a, a, a quick PowerPoint to hit some of the high points of uh, the shop local digital gift card program, um, just to give you a sense of what it is and, and all the many benefits that um, Baldwin Park can get from it. Can you go to the next slide? So, you know, this is, this is an interesting program because it really is a win, win, win. Um, it's a win for the city. It's a win for your local residents that, that participate in buying the digital gift cards. And certainly it's a, it's a win for your local businesses, especially small independent owned businesses. Um, we've, uh, as a company, done work for 20 cities with um, ARPA, American Rescue Plan Act. In a number of those cities, we, we look to do um, a digital gift card program as part of the recovery for small businesses. And so we've done 12 of these now and we're working on several more opportunities. So we really have learned um, the benefits for these, what works, what doesn't work. And, and so we're, we actually, uh, because we kept running into YIFTI in a lot of these programs and, and cities all over the state, um, we actually entered into a partnership with them. Um, can you go to the next slide? So again, um, HDL has, has been around for a little over 39 years. We're gonna have a 40 year celebration next year. We're based in Orange County. Uh, we do work for about 500 local governments, a lot in California. Uh, for Baldwin Park, we currently provide sales tax and property tax consulting services for, for the city. So my division was started in 2014 to work with cities on economic development services, all kinds of different types of economic development services, products, uh, programs. We've worked with 175 local governments, mostly cities, um, during the last uh, almost eight and a half years. Next. Um, so again, we got into doing a number of these um, shop local digital gift card programs with EFD. So here's the list of, of those. There's a number of these that were, there's probably five that we're currently working on right now where we've uh, just implemented them. Some of them we've actually sold out already and we're looking to do a second phase and some we're just getting ready to kick off um, in the next week or so. A lot of them have been motivated to get these up and running um, to capture um, sales and the opportunities with the with the holiday season that's going to be upon us pretty quickly if it's not here already um we can just see the the different types of cities that some larger cities some kind of mid-sized and then some smaller cities in terms of um population and, and makeup of those communities next um so what we offer is is to really come in and help be the partner with the city and then working with EFT because of that relationship that we have with them um, to really put together your program and, and help manage it. 
Um, again, we've done it in a lot of different cities. Um, so we have a lot of experience having done this many times um, and really what works and then more importantly, what doesn't work. And so we, uh, we identified the level of, of funding. We've been working with your staff on that. Um, we help identify um, eligible businesses, business types that really have been impacted by COVID and the pandemic and who can really kind of benefit from this kind of program. We assist in setting up and managing uh, everything to do with, with the YFD um, um, account and, and, and working with them. And we have that relationship where we get you know, superior customer service and interaction with them. And then we help um, create a graphics program, um, establish a brand. Even though you don't have a physical gift card, you wanna create um, a brand and a theme um, to market this program. Uh, and then we'll act as a single point of contract for business owners and then, and, and then work with, uh, with EFD to provide that really excellent customer service, which is something that our, our company's always been proud of. And then as we're, as we're doing this thing and kicking it off, um, we're going to monitor um, what people are spending their money on, where they're spending it on. Um, and again, when we do this program, we, we target eligible businesses. And so you've developed and we worked with your staff on, on, on determining um, the right types of businesses to participate in, in this program from a merchant per perspective. So um, again, it's, it's monitoring, tracking, and, and looking at the positive results from the program. Next. Um, again, shop local programs are, are really, really important now. Um, our company does sales tax for probably close to 400 cities in California, most of the counties. And so we see all that sales tax data. From a positive standpoint, sales tax has bounced back from pre-pandemic le levels. It's actually increased in most communities, but that doesn't really tell the, the whole total story. Um, small businesses and independent businesses especially um, still suffer. They're, they're still struggling with the whole pandemic and the impacts of that and COVID and everything else. Um, so they, they really are, even though their, their sales have increased in a lot of cases, um, they've had challenges with restaurants, with uh, labor shortages, having to pay more for labor, uh, just all the different kinds of products that go into um, a restaurant and a small retailer fitness, personal services, all those kinds of things, they really are struggling. They're not back to pre-pandemic in terms of margins and um, achieving cash flow. And so working with your small businesses, doing that shop local um, really, really is important. People want to spend their money. Consumers want to spend their money. We need to figure out ways that they can spend their money locally um, in Baldwin Park. When you look at a small business, $68 of everything that is, is produced from a small business locally um, stays there locally. And, it's, and it's, it's, it goes into all kinds of other things in the community. When you're looking at a non-local and more of a corporation or a, more of a national business, only $43 stay there locally out of $100 spent. So again, those small businesses, they're really, really super important. Next. Uh, UFD, they really are kind of the dominant player here. They've done over 400 gift card programs um, across the United States in 49 of the 50 states. They've done over 150 programs in California. And as we started looking for a partner to do this with, they're the logical um, company for us to partner with. Um, they have the best customer service. They have the best track record. They've done the most um, uh, programs. Um, they really are um, you know, kind of the cream of the crop in terms of doing these digital gift card programs. Uh, next, uh, here's just an example of, of the branding for one city, um, and, and this actually, when you when you when you get your merchants and something goes on um, on their phone or on their computer to buy a gift card, they have the amounts in there, and then they can they can go ahead and, and purchase the gift cards. There'll be a map on there that will show uh, businesses, merchants that are participating in the program. Uh, we like to see at least 15 to 20 to start with. Um, I think in Baldwin Park, we'll get more than that. Um, and, and we're getting that in, in a lot of a lot more than we're getting in some places, we're getting 35 to 45 different participating merchants. So you want to have a good mix of merchants that are attractive that people want to buy these cards for. Next. Um, it doesn't take anything special. Um, most businesses, if they can take a credit card, um, 
it works with that. And so EFT's partner is MasterCard. And so this is just like doing a MasterCard transaction. Next. Here's that map I was talking about. Um, when, you, when you go up um, and you go through the, uh, the EFT website, you're gonna see all the different businesses and merchants that are participating in the program. Um, in Baldwin Park. And so they can identify who they are. You can see where they're located. Um, but again, we're looking for a lot of diversity in terms of, of merchants to participate in this program. Next. Uh, and then and, uh, we've been working with your staff in terms of, um, and this is, again, we've looked at a lot of other communities that we've done this in, what works, what doesn't work. And so the businesses that um, would be eligible our small independently owned business. We're not looking for the corporate large companies. Uh, we're looking for, for businesses that have 10 or fewer employees, have been operating for at least a year, be a brick and mortar business, not a home base. Um, but it's looking at eligible, uh, eligible businesses being retailers, restaurants, personal services, and that can be hairstylists, barbers, uh, dry cleaners, um, salons, fitness uses, all that kind of thing. Those that are not eligible are gas stations, uh, grocery stores, cannabis, massage, and you can see the rest of those there. And, and again, we're not looking for the corporate businesses, we're looking at small independent owned businesses. Next. And again, th this kind of focuses on that return on investment um, and, and the different kinds of things that you're getting. Again, I talked about it being a win, win, win. So it, it, it really is, it's, it's a, it's a win for those small businesses. It's a win for your residents. So we're, 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 uh, recommending doing a, a, a buy one, get one free and using some of your ARPA dollars to help with that buy that, that bonus card. Um, and there, and as part of it, you're also going to go ahead and pay for the transaction costs when they purchase the original gift card. It's, it's a dollar. Um, times 5% of the value of the card. Um, and so we're using ARPA dollars to help stimulate that activity um, and get this program going. So it's giving your residents, residents that, um, that positive aspect too, where they've, they've got a bonus card, but then they're spending their money locally. And I think kind of it's important to show is that um, 51, on average, 51% 51 of the cardholders, when they're making their purchases, they're trying places that they never tried before. And so again, stimulating activity um, in your business community. You want to have a good have a good diversity of places that um, they can pick and choose from. But they're trying new things too. Um, you know, Ninety-two percent of the cardholders really they, they prefer to shop local over national gift cards. Um, and so it's looking at um, getting that really you know, high-end return on investment in your local business, in your small independent owned businesses, that's really, really important. So it, it, again, this is kind of the, the gift that keeps giving. Um, and then the other thing that helps the city, it, you're getting new sales tax revenue too. So it really is a win, win, win. Next. Um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Our contract is we're gonna go ahead and put everything together for you to manage the program. We have a contract with a not to exceed cost of $12,500. That's based on actually us doing the work for it. Um, and again, we've done 12 of these. We're currently, I think, doing five or six of these now. And then we have a few more coming up here in the next couple of weeks. But we've picked up a lot of experience and, and uh, uh, look forward to the opportunity to work with Baldwin Park. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Appreciate that presentation. Um, so I do have a couple of questions uh, from reading the staff report. So the cost paid to Yifty, according to the staff report, states that the value of the bonus card provided. So can you, Victor or Enrique, can you just clarify for me the cost of $115,000 that's going to be used from the ARPA funds? What exactly does that amount cover? Well, that amount's going to cover the uh, <clears throat> the PSA with... Uh with uh with uh, HDL it's going to cover Yifty's fees which is that uh, the $1 plus 5% and then uh, and then what's left over is going to be the matching amounts of the bonus card that the participants are going to get got it so just as an example if i purchase a $100 gift card i'm going to automatically get another $100 gift card for free so it's buy one get one free correct and the city will cover that bonus card Correct. Yes. And in this amount is also included the 12,500 
a contract to uh, HDL? Yes. Uh, yes. The 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 uh, yes. Okay. And then the merchant. So, for example, the business. Let's just say I wanted to opt in and participate in this program, and I am accepting these gift cards at my business. The only cost that's going to cost me is going to be the Mastercard merchant fees that I would be charged by Mastercard when I swipe that card. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. So that would we're talking about anywhere from one point five to two point nine percent for swiping, and maybe a three point five for key entry. Correct. That's what the businesses would pay. It's it's the same as any other um, credit card transaction if you're doing it on the phone. Okay, and that's the only fees that the business would pay. Correct, and they don't they don't they don't need any special um, equipment. And ninety nine percent of these people already have a POS, and they they have the ability to do these. Okay, and then my second question is: um, I did read that the Baldwin Park Association has agreed to assist in the recruitment um, of partic participating businesses. So, will the business association only recruit businesses? Who are part of the business association or will they recruit businesses in the city in general that basically qualify based on the edge of eligibility on the staff report let me answer that one victor i you know we engage with the business association mayor pro tem uh and not because we wanted it to be exclusive to the members of the association but it also has a corollary benefit for the association for them to market uh, the their their mission and their very existence here in the city because many businesses do not know of the uh, Baldwin Park Business Association and the many other uh, related services that they provide if nothing else certainly peer uh, peer exchange uh, but so we engage with them uh, for that reason and and so they jumped at the opportunity they're going to help us. Um, if what comes out of their engagement and their participation is that businesses believe that being members or becoming members of the association is a good thing for them, it is not at all a condition. Got it. But I just want to make sure that when they are out there actively recruiting these businesses, obviously, you know, I don't have a problem with them recruiting or, you know, approaching members of their association first. But I just want to make sure that we're not leaving any other small businesses aside that are currently not part of the business association. So I just want to make sure that when they're doing the recruiting efforts, that they're not just recruiting members of the association, but also recruiting businesses within the city that fall within the eligibility criteria that are not, you know, currently members of the association. We'll make sure of that, Mayor Patel. Please. Okay. We're looking at working with the business association is just just one avenue of recruiting businesses. Barry and I will probably also be very active uh, uh, going out there and, and visiting businesses. I've already let kind of a couple of businesses know this may be coming down the road and be a great opportunity. But working at the business association, that's just going to be one avenue where we definitely want to get as many businesses that are eligible to participate as possible and give the users of the cards uh, a wide variety of businesses to visit in the city and hopefully some businesses they've never been to before that didn't even know we're there. Perfect. Yeah. And then my last question is I seen on the slide that the rollout is about three weeks. So are we going to be in time for the holidays since three weeks is what probably about blah, 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 blah. December 7th is three weeks from now. So we'll be in time for Christmas. We, we are, um, we are ready to go on this. If you prove it tonight and, and we get the contracts executed, um, we've already kind of started to lay some of the groundwork and we are, uh, again, we've, we, we've done like three or four of these in the last couple of weeks and we are um, chomping at the bit to get going. So we will do everything we possibly can to get going and, th within, and roll this thing out with three weeks. It's going to be really dependent upon um, your, your business association, uh, Victor, us getting ready to go out. And, and uh, again, we like to see at least 12 to 15 to more like 20 merchants to start with. And so as, as soon as we have those, then we're ready to go. We can add more as we get into it. Um, but, but we'd like to have that kind of that, that, that good diversity to get this thing rolled out. So, the, you know, the goal is to get uh, 12 to 15 merchants. And I, I have um, a lot of confidence that we'll have more than that. when we roll this thing out. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a great thing. Um, if we can roll this out, you know, 
the sooner the better so that we can you know jump at the uh, Christmas shopping time. Um, that's pretty much all the questions that I had. Yeah, we worked really hard to get make sure we had the agreements kind of signed, uh, get the city attorney comments and get them signed so we have those ready so we get approved today. You know, we can get our signatures and we can we can jump on this right away. Perfect. Great. Thank you guys for the presentation. You're welcome. Great. Any other questions from other council members? No. All right. Okay. I'll go ahead and make a motion uh, to pass item four. Second. City clerk, roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Pro Tem uh, Daniel Damien. Yes. Mayor Emanuel Estrada. Yes. Council member Alejandra Avila. Yes. Council member Monica Garcia. Yes. Council member Paul Hernandez. Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you for that. And so item number five, I just wanted to bring up real quick. I just wanted to know why we're reauthorizing a RFP. Yes. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity to expand on this. Uh, in the process, when we were we issued the first RFP, uh, staff did a very good job in creating the RFP, but some of the vendors asked uh, a few questions and uh, staff provided uh, incorrect responses. Uh, so that uh, created uh, a, an issue with uh, selecting a vendor because some of the vendors did not apply for this project based on staff's comments in regards to some of the questions that were asked. So we worked with our legal counsel and we determined that it's in the city's best interest to go ahead and reject all bids and reissue a new RFP. It was definitely a learning experience for staff and we've evolved and learned from it. And uh, we, although we are a few months behind, we are ready to go. We have our internal uh, department-wide team, and I feel very confident we'll, we will be bringing this back to, to City Council within the next few months to award a contract. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And then just to double check, the RFP will be asking for the new website redesign to be ADA compliant and, of course, ADA friendly, correct? Absolutely. We will be incorporating all the best pra practices uh, known. Thank you. Great. Okay. So I will go. Any other questions from staff? I mean, uh, council yeah. before I make a. I just have one quick question, Mayor. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, Manny, do you know uh, what an ETA would be for us to get this website up and running? Just an estimated timeline? I, I would say <clears throat> we will be selecting a vendor within the next few months uh, in regards to developing the content training staff. I would think that would probably be, and this is just a guesstimation, uh, probably six to nine months, but we would definitely fast track this as much as possible. Please. Thank you, Manny. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thank you for that, Manny. So at this moment, I will make a motion to approve item number five. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. City clerk, roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Manuel Estrada. Yes. Council member Alejandra Avila. Council member Monica Garcia. Yes. Council member Paul Hernandez. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damien. Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you for that, City Clerk. So at this moment, we do have a public hearing this time for real. Is that correct, City Attorney? So yeah. We have a public hearing and adoption in the second reading of Ordinance Number 1471, adopting the 2022 California Building Code, 2022 California Residential Code with appendices I and K, 2022 California Existing Public. Building Code, 2022 California Mechanical Code, et cetera. So staff recommends that we conduct a public hearing and then close the public hearing. So at this motion, at this moment, I will uh, op I will formally open the public uh, public hearing for anybody looking to speak in favor. So if you are looking to speak in favor of this um, of the ordinance, now is your time. Okay, so simultaneous or. Uh, you can speak in favor or against at this time. Nobody. Seeing that nobody is looking to speak, I will close the public hearing and find that the adoption of this ordinance is exempt from the requirements of the California Environmental Quality Act. And item number three, well, uh, I believe we will make a motion. So I will make a motion to adopt 
the ordinance number 1471 entitled entitled an ordinance of the city of, of uh, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Ballin Park California amending chapter 150 of title 15 and adding new sections to chapter 150 to title 15 of the Ballin Park Municipal Code adopting by reference title 24 of the California Code of Regulations specifically adopting the 2022 California Building Code 2022 California Residential Code with appendices, appendices I and K, 2022 California Existing Building Code, 2022 California Mechanical Code, 2022 California Plumbing Code, 2022 California Electrical Code, 2022 California Green Building and Standards Code, 2022 California Energy Code, 2022 California Historical Code, 2022 California Reference Standards Code, 2022 California Fire Code, and 2023 Los Angeles County Fire Code, including all appendices as mandated by the California Health and Safety Code, Section 18938. That is my motion. Can I get a second? Seconded by uh, Councilwoman Avila, City Clerk. Can I get a roll call, please? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Mayor Manuel Estrada? Yes. Councilmember Alejandra Avila? Yes. Councilmember Monica Garcia? Yes. Councilmember Paul Hernandez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damien? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for that, City Clerk. So at this moment, we do have a reports of officers adopt resolution appointing Best Besson Krieger, LLP, also known as BBK, as the city's permanent city attorney and approving a legal services agreement for legal services. I will go ahead and hand this over to our city manager, who I believe uh, did do some uh, did due diligence uh, regarding requests from other council members. Um, and Mayor, before you get to that, just like the last time, I will need to recuse myself from this item and step off the dais. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, Enrique, you can... Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, per Council's direction uh, from the last meeting, when you approve the interim agreement for legal services from BBK, you asked me to pursue, uh, immediately following the meeting, uh, the negotiations of a agreement for permanent permanent services and we appre we as staff appreciate the fact that you want to bring full stability to that part of the organization because uh, uh, so many of our city business requires legal review requires legal opinions uh, legal assistance so uh, uh, we as staff appreciate the fact that you uh, have given it a very high priority to bring stability to this aspect of the city business. So uh, in doing so, uh, I sat down with uh, BBK uh, to consider the fact that it's no longer an interim agreement, but it's a permanent agreement that we were considering, that the council would consider, and that based on that notion that they uh, ought to provide us with uh, better rates, meaning lower rates, um, and they did, and and so the agreement that I have brought forth is is responsive to the fact that it is now a permanent uh, agreement that we're uh, considering, or that I'm recommending that you approve uh, to bring BBK as the permanent permanent city attorney and bring that much needed stability to that aspect of our city business. So with that, I I recommend that you approve the proposed agreement. Great. Thank you for that, city manager. And then at this moment, if city council has any questions or comments, now is your time. If not, I will go ahead and make a motion to adopt uh, resolution number 2022-062, appointing Best Best and Krieger as the city's permanent city attorney, effective as of the date of the execution of the agreement. Uh, city clerk, oh, sorry, can I get a second? Second. City clerk, roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Manuel Estrada? Yes. Council Member Alejandra Avila? Yes. Council Member Monica Garcia? Yes. Council Member Paul Hernandez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damien? Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you for that, City Clerk. So at this moment, we are City Council acting as successor agency of the Dissolved Community Development Commission, and we do have a. Oh, yes. City Attorney. <laughs> Too eager to keep going. We need to have a beer. <laughs> Go ahead. It's okay, you're official. You can sit down. City Council acting as success, of course, uh, welcoming our permanent uh, city attorney from BBK. Thank you. 
City Council acting as successor agency of the Dissolved Community Development Commission. We do have a consent calendar, so I will go ahead and make a motion to pass that consent calendar. Can I get a second? Second. City Clerk, roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Emanuel Estrada? Yes. Council Member uh, Avila? Yes. Council Member Monica Garcia? Yes. Council Member Paul Hernandez? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Daniel Damien? Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you for that, City Clerk. And before we go to our comments, I am going to open up the, well, it's already open, so I'm going to the Finance Authority regular meeting. We do have a consent calendar, and that is our Treasurer's Report for September 2022. I will go ahead and make a motion to pass that consent calendar. Can I get a second? City Clerk, roll call, please. Thank you. Chair Emanuel Estrada? Yes. Board Member Alejandra Avila? Vice Chair Daniel Damien? Yes. Board Member Monica Garcia? Yes. Board Member Paul Hernandez? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you for that, City Clerk. And we do have a agenda for our Housing Authority regular meeting. We have a consent calendar uh, regarding warrants and demands and our treasurer's report. So I will go ahead and make a motion to pass the consent calendar. Can I get a second? Second. City Clerk, roll call, please. Thank you, Mayor. Chair Emanuel Estrada? Yes. Board Member uh, Alejandra Avila? Yes. Vice Chair uh, Daniel Damien? Yes. Uh, uh, Board Member Monica Garcia? Yes. Board Member Paul Hernandez? Yes. Motion passes. Great. Thank you for that, City Clerk. And we are down to City Council, City Clerk, City Treasurer, staff requests, and communications. I did have a couple of comments that didn't get onto the agenda. So I know that uh, we are trying to work with our Regency Hotel, uh, the new owners of the Regency Hotel, to develop that property. So we want to make sure we follow up and see what we can do to support them. Um, Habitat for Humanity, I visited the Steward site on Los Angeles, and they are more than ready to start um, construction and rehabilitation to turn that property into affordable home ownership opportunities. But that property does currently hold uh, house, um, I believe, two nonprofits, so they do have to find space for them to relocate. Um, so I want to make sure that we can work with them, see if we can house them at our family service center. And um, that is it for now. So. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so I would like to request a discussion and consideration to explore bringing back the uh, first time home buyer program and as well as ADU grants. So I would like to direct staff to provide a staff report with options and available uh, resources. It would be good, obviously, the first time home buyer program to help our residents uh, purchase their first home. The uh, ADU grant program would be something that would help current homeowners being able to develop an ADU, which would also help them with rental income, but would also help our tenants in the city looking for an affordable place to rent. So if staff can uh, bring back a report uh, with options and available uh, resources. That is why I have that. Great, I think that's a uh, great idea, Mayor Pro Tem. I think both are, I know, um, I think it's just a matter of getting down to the fine details of it. I know, I think Arcadia, or Al actually Alhambra has a, uh, a very uh, nice home ownership program. That might be something we can look into, get some ideas off of. So that's yeah, okay with Alhambra, sorry. Yeah, definitely explore options, see what other programs are out there. Um, I know that CalHafa currently has an ADU grant program. So maybe look at the guidelines that they have. Uh, obviously we wanna make it, you know, easier for our residents to be able to apply for these programs because some of the state programs have a lot of red tape to them. So let's just explore what options are there and then also our, our funding sources. Good idea. Good. Any other comments, Mayor Pro Tem? Nope, that was all I have. Thank you, Mayor. Great. I know we touched on this topic, but just want to double check with Councilwoman Garcia, see if she has any more comments regarding her topic. No, not at this time. I think, you know, we'll wait for um, the next briefing on public safety and also the land use um, planning report. I think Ron Garcia will, will be able to fill us in at the next um, opportunity when he's back. Great. When he's back in the office. That's good. Okay, thank you for that. And then just double checking with any other council members, if you have any questions, comments, concerns before we end this meeting. Mayor. If yes. I could say something really quick, yes, please. City clerk. Thank you. I just wanted to publicly thank the uh, Baldwin Park Police Department. Uh, last Friday, I was headed to my 40th high school reunion, 
and I was waiting at a stop signal and unfortunately got rear-ended and it was quite scary. Uh, I'm doing okay. Um, I was not uh, looking behind or forward. I was looking at the 7-Eleven, uh, which was a good thing, so it, I didn't uh, realize that I was going to be hit. So, um, but immediately I called the police department and the, um, the dis dispatchers were professional. Uh, police officers arrived right away. They were extremely professional, very compassionate. I was lucky that I could drive my car away, head back home. Uh, the other, the individual that hit me was not as, as, as fortunate. Uh, he had to be towed away. But again, I think it's just important that um, we praise our police department. I don't have the name of the officers, uh, Chief, but if you could uh, please, I'm sure you, you have the report. Uh, please thank them uh, on my behalf. Uh, again, they were just exceptional. And so I appreciate that. And uh, I think we, we need to be careful. Unfortunately, the driver who hit me, his airbag went off. And I, I, I suspect that he was probably busy on his cell phone. And um, he hit me head on um, or uh, with full speed that he was coming. And so um, it, uh, it's, it's just uh, we need to educate our, our residents to drive carefully and be focused on the road and not on our cell phones. So thank you to the police department, and thank you to those who reached out. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. Thank, thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. I was I'm able to make it to my 40th reunion, too. And I'm happy <laughs> to hear you're okay and see that you're okay. Thank you. Great. Glad to hear. And good to hear you're having good uh, interactions with RPD. I'm sure all of our residents are. So if there's no more comments, questions, or concerns, uh, we are ready to adjourn the meeting. Um, out of respect to our council member Hernandez, we will adjourn in memory of uh, Rebecca Delgado Gonzalez. And we just want to reiterate that we are here to support our council member during his tough times and his family. Uh, I will move to more, adjourn the meeting. Can I get a second? Second. City clerk, oh, no, no city clerk. Uh, any objections? If not, meeting is adjourned. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Marie.